Hey guys, um, this one is a little technical, but I, I think it will significantly help those of you out there that are doing really fine uh, and tight key work and key fitting on uh, vintage saxophones. So I'm currently working on a heavily relacquered mid-period uh, Mark VI tenor that's seen some pretty nasty body work uh, in the past and uh, working on the right hand key fitting here and everything was unfortunately misaligned um, and a typical problem that I see on instruments like that or even instruments from the factory is that you get to that last quarter turn in tightening the hinge rod and there's a bind on the last key and the key sticks straight up in the air and you know you let out whatever expletive um, you'd like and typically the problem here once you've confirmed that the rod is straight that we have you know good freedom of the rod alignment inside the post that they're moving as freely as possible ideally the rod is just dropping through those posts and that there's no internal binding on the keys that it feels like glass and you can drop the rod through each key once it's fit tight um, and not have a bind then the issue is almost all of the time a misalignment of either the internal threads of the post or the threads on the end of the hinge tube now uh, or the end of the hinge rod rather excuse me so rather than start machining new rods which I've done that as well we can adjust the actual post head to make up for that problem and so what I used to do is I would tighten that last quarter turn with either the key on or the key off um, run this all the way through tighten it and if I saw you know what I would be looking for is how that last um, section of rod would bow between these two posts so if it bowed up that was an indication that the threading on the last post was essentially cantered in an upward position and I would take my Nipex uh, parallel pliers which are fantastic for this job because they do not mar and I would bend the top post head downward a little bit and that would then hopefully you know make so that when I tighten that rod it would sit flat and then I would get rid of the bind however there's a lot of guesswork involved with that method and sometimes it would take one try sometimes it would take me an hour and a half to figure out exactly how it was moving um, same thing if it bows downwards that means it's countered cantered downwards and needs to be turned up left to right all these are potential factors if somebody's been in here whacking around on the post heads it's entirely possible so to cut down on this what I did is I made these very short uh, if it'll focus on it oh it's almost there okay threaded rods and um, I've made a couple of them for King Con and um, balanced action and of course the mark 6 one which I use the most so that it would give me an indication as to where the post head internal threading was angled and by running the post through and seeing where that alignment was now this one I've already got so that it's not binding I should have taken the video beforehand and giving me a better sense of what angle you know the threads are I can then adjust the post so much quicker um, and this has allowed me to get rid of in this particular situation and dozens of others the bind in you know a couple tries you know probably max three tries so I would suggest if you have a, have a lathe you know measure the diameter uh, the outer major diameter and the thread pitch of some horns that you work on frequently and make yourself a, a couple of these um, they're really simple I would like to make a knurled version at some point when I have time which doesn't seem like it's gonna happen anytime soon so that they're a little easier to get in there but seriously this is a huge time saver it's a simple project um, and again any of you who do tight key fitting on saxophones especially vintage horns know exactly what I'm talking about okay thanks bye